In this lesson, we're going to be talking about electrical terminology, especially the terms that you're going to be seeing used in this entire course as well as for the rest of your career. We're going to start off with matter. Okay, you may remember this from back in science class in high school or prior schools, but matter is anything that takes up space and has weight. Okay, air, believe it or not, is matter because air has weight and takes up space. Any gases is matter. Um, obviously, anything heavy, like a substance that's on your desk, um, is matter. Textbooks are matter. You are matter for all that matter. Okay, atoms is one of the most basic forms that make up all substances. Okay, everything is made up of atoms. Protons are positively charged particles in the nucleus of an atom, and electrons are negatively charged particles in the nucleus of an atom. Now, conductors allow these electrons to pass freely. Okay, conductors really only have one or two electrons in, an e in the outer shell. In other words, they're easy to move because that's the basis of all electrical. Insulators have seven to eight electrons in the outer shell. Insulators prevent electrons from moving. Okay, a great example of this is copper, silver, and gold are great conductors of electricity. The electrons can easily pass from one atom to another. Insulators, things like rubber, plastic, glass, dry wood, okay, are all things where electrons is harder to move. Now, electricity, which we're going to spend a great deal of time talking about, is the flow of electrons. Okay, electrons can be forced out of their orbit in a number of ways. In other words, how electricity is produced. Okay, friction is static electricity. Someone's going to kill me for this comment, but it's like petting the fur of a cat backwards on a, in a very dry environment. Okay, static electricity, you'll see little sparks. Rub your feet on a carpeted floor on a dry winter day and touch a doorknob. That's friction, static electricity. Your car battery produces electricity chemically, okay? The little AA batteries produce electricity chemically. It's a chemical reaction. Then we have how most of our mass production of electricity happens magnetically. Okay, a generator. You spin a you spin um, a coil of wire around a magnet or two, and that coil of wire will pick up the magnetic energy. Okay, it excites the electrons, and the electrons start flowing in the wires. Okay, electrical circuits are combinations of path parts to form a complete path through which electrons can be moved and used. Okay, line voltage, that's the voltage that's supplied to a piece of equipment from power source. Now, line voltage, you got to be careful. It's not always 120 volts. It could be 240, 480, 230. It's all dependent on what that piece of equipment is connected to. Okay, loads are devices that use electricity to perform useful work. A light bulb is a load because it's using electricity to generate heat and heat up that filament in the bulb and it produce it uh, it makes light okay control or switch is a device that allows you to open or close a circuit now there's two terms in here i want to point out open or close a closed circuit allows electricity to flow an open circuit has a gap someplace in the circuit that does not allow electricity to flow. So an open circuit does not allow the light bulb to come on. A closed circuit allows the light bulb to come on. It is exactly opposite of a water valve. Okay, an open valve allows water to flow. An open electrical circuit does not allow electricity to flow. Okay, so a closed circuit is a complete path for electrons to flow. An open circuit is a broken path. Those two terms, knowing that, is going to save you further on down the road. So we have four absolute parts of a circuit. Line is your voltage source. Load 
is a unit of resistance. In other words, something that causes resistance and uses power. Control, it's a switch to start, to start or stop the electricity. Path is the wiring. I have to have line, load, control, and path for any circuit to work. Now, if you take a look at this symbol sheet, and there's another copy in your course material that makes it a little bit bigger. These are all the electrical symbols that you will see on the picture of the circuit or the schematic diagram. Okay, You'll see the switches. You'll see the cell solenoids. You'll see the heaters. You'll see the fuses. This is an absolute. You have to know what these symbols mean. Now, different manufacturers will use different versions of this, and you're going to see a slightly different versions of some of these symbols, but you'll always be able to refer back to your basic knowledge of symbols, and you have to memorize this symbol sheet. Okay, Voltage is the electrical pressure that makes the electrons to flow. Okay, It's a potential to do work. A millivolt is 0 0.001 volts. A kilovolt is 1,000 volts. Current, or amps, is the amount of electrons flowing in the circuit, sort of like the speed of electrons flowing. Okay, and again, a milliamp is 0 0.001. A microamp, add another three zeros. Resistance is anything in the circuit that prevents the free flow of electrons, okay? But it is also a load, okay? So if you put a resistor, which is a device that actually purposely adds resistance, it's using electricity, okay? It's using some of this to create heat, okay? A motor is a resistant resistor, okay? It's using power. It prevents electricity from flowing freely, but it also does work. Okay. Electrical powers at the rate at which electricity is being used or the rate at which electrons perform useful work. A couple equivalent values you should know. Horsepower is 746 watts. One watt is 3.441 BTUs per hour, which is a measure of um, heat or energy being produced. British thermal unit, 1,000 watts per hour is a kilowatt hour. Your electric company bills you in watts. Okay. Another term you have to know is lockout tagout. It locks the power source from being turned on and has a tag on it telling who locked it out. It's a safety. So these electrical terms, um, you really need to understand and know, go back and study them, and we're going to be using them throughout the course.